Welcome, family and friends. I am Pastor Lorenzo Robertson. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad. I serve as a pastor of the New Jerusalem Baptist Church, and on behalf of all the members, the family of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, we want to welcome you to this virtual experience. We are so honored and elated to make this connection with you. Today is going to be so good and refreshing. Listen, do me a favor. Why don't you share with somebody that you are watching New Jerusalem Baptist Church by way of this medium? Why don't you start a watch party? Write down in the comment section whenever you feel. Take a picture of you and your family watching our stream and let all your friends know that you're being blessed. Now, you know what time it is. It's time to receive, repost, and share with your friends. Are you ready? Let's go into worship, even now. God bless you. We welcome you into the sanctuary of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church on this first Sunday of November. It's been said that 2020 has been the longest year in history, but you've made it to this 11th month of the year. And truly, you've got so much to give God praise for. You've got so much to give him glory for. We will not, we shall not complain. We thank God for allowing us to make it to this present moment in time, this present moment in history. And we welcome you to the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church Sunday morning worship celebration virtually. And truly we thank God for you logging in and tuning in. We want to not only invite you and welcome you, but we want to invite the presence of God into this sacred space where I am and wherever you are. It is sacred. Truly, it is holy ground. And we want to ask God's presence and invite his power in on this Sunday morning. Will you join in prayer with me as we do just that? Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for how good you are, how good you've been. Lord, you are an awesome God. And we give you praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Lord, your goodness is not lost on us. We're here in place where you ordained us to be, to worship your holy name. We thank you, Lord, 
for how good you are. We thank you for how you keep blessing us. We thank you for how you keep watch over us. And Lord, we thank you for your justification. We thank you, Father God, that you continue to forgive us of our sins. And we ask that you do it again, one more time, that you forgive us, each and every one of us, of all our sins. Lord, we have sinned and come short of your glory, asking that you wash us in your son Jesus' blood, that same, same blood we've come to celebrate this first Sunday. Take that blood, Lord, and wash us and cleanse us and make us whiter than snow. For sin have left a crimson stain, but your blood washed it. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood. We ask that you continue to bless us and keep us as only you can. We need you now in this hour. We need you, Lord, in this week. Our world, our economy, our society needs you. In this voting week, Lord, we need your mighty hand to be in power. We need you to orchestrate and ordain the outcome of this world. We need you like we ever needed you before. We bless you in this place. We're praying for the names that are scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Lord, bless them. Heal them. Deliver them. Set them free. Come alongside them now. We're praying for them, Lord, that you would lift them up. Give them strength. Give them power. Let them know that you're right there with them. Lord, we thank you for those that have tuned in whose names may not be at the bottom of the screen, but they're not feeling their best this morning. I pray for them as well, that you heal, that you bless them, that you help our mental states, that you help our physical states, that you even help our financial status. Lord, we need you every step of the way. In this place, Father God, we've come to give you praise. We've come to worship you. We've come to glorify you. We thank you for Jesus on this first Sunday. Thank you for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the nail in your hand. Thank you for the spike in your feet. Thank you for how you hung your head, bled and suffered and died for our sins. But you didn't stay dead. But bright early Sunday morning, you rose with all power in your hands. And we thank you for your power today. We seek your face. We seek direction from you. We seek your guidance. We need your deliverance. Bless us, Lord, as only you can. Bless us as only you see fit. And Lord, any way you bless us, we will be satisfied. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And the church said, amen. Amen. Again, we welcome you into this place this Sunday morning as we come to worship the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this first Sunday, it is Communion Sunday, and I'm asking that you would even now prepare your elements for communion, which we will celebrate and partake together towards the end of today's worship service. Whatever you have, if you've got grape juice and crackers, you're right on time. But if you don't have that, whatever you have in the house, if you've got milk and cookies, if you've got water, if you've got bread, whatever you have, it's all done by transubstantiation anyhow. We're going to pray over the element and ask God to transform it and signify it for his body and blood. And we're going to ask him to anoint it. So whatever you have, we ask that you secure that even now so that you're ready to partake with us at the end of service. Gather the family around, get the children together, get that spouse together. And let's do communion on today, this 11th month of the year. We'll do that again at the end of worship service. Again, a big God bless you to you today. We're blessing the names that are scrolling at the bottom of our screen. We love you. We're praying for you. Again, we miss all of you, New Jerusalem. We miss being in worship with you and hope you're being safe. Hope you're being clean on today. And then we want to make a welcome, a, a big welcome to all of our visitors that have not yet joined in covenant relationship with New Jerusalem Baptist Church. We welcome you into this place. We hope you make yourself at home. Stay logged in. Stay tuned in. You are a part of us on today. And we welcome you into this place. And at this time, what we do right about this time is we have a virtual fellowship period. What we do is we pass the peace. We do it virtually by way of our comment section below. Whatever medium you're watching us on, you can comment and reply below. Say hello to one another. Say hello to your brothers and sisters. Say hello to me. I see those comments. God bless you. I see them every week and I thank God for you. I thank God for your words of encouragement. Thank God for your hellos and your greetings. 
truly we love you. We worship you and we want you to love on one another and worship God together. At this time, you may do so in the comment section. Pass the peace. Amen. Greet one another in love and in Christian unity. Amen. God bless you for that on today. As we move forward in service, as we move forward in worship, it is now time for our tithe and offering period. For we truly, if we're not fooling ourselves, we know that God's been good to us. He's been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. We, we, we cannot even imagine to do the things that God has done for us. We could not even make it possible. And truly, we come to say thank you to God for how he has provided for us, how he's protected us, how his hand is mighty toward us in the way of grace and mercy. And I'm asking that you would now make ready to give of the tithe and the offering as we come to this 11th month of the year. Sometimes it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. And we want you to think about finishing strong in 2020. I know it's been a difficult year. It's been challenging for a lot of us. Some of us had many obstacles to get over, even COVID-19 and then other obstacles uh, that have popped up in just normal, yearly, and everyday life. And truly, God has taken us through it all, over it all. He has brought us through. And here we are, the first Sunday of November, November 1st. And truly, we thank God for allowing us to make it here. Now we want to finish strong. We want to finish the year on the right note by giving God what belongs unto him. Maybe you weren't faithful the year in, but we want to finish out strong and faithful in that I want to be found a tither. I want to be found a giver. Pastor, what is tithing? Tithing is giving 10% of the income that God has blessed you with. That belongs unto the Lord. For the government had pulled theirs out already. The state, depends on what city you live in, the local, have all gotten their taxes out already. Friend of the court got theirs. FICA got hers. Everyone got theirs. But on your pay stub, you did not see God and 10% which means God trusted you with his portion, with his tithe. He trusted you so that you would have a way to be blessed. If you are found trustworthy, if you're found faithful and obedient on today, you then will prepare a tithe and give that unto the Lord. And when you give that unto God, he'll turn around and bless you. Malachi 3 and 10 puts it this way. He'll open the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He gave you that opportunity to pretty much bless yourself. And if you rob God, he will then come and curse with a curse. I'd rather be blessed than cursed. So I'm going to be obedient to the word of God, and I'm going to give unto the Lord what belongs unto him in this moment. And we ask that you be found faithful. New Jerusalem, I'm asking as a member that you give your tithe as well as your offering on today. We ask that you would make ready to give of your tithe and offering. You will see on the screen here at New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, we have four ways of giving. The first way is by mail. You can mail your tithe and your offering to 168 Prospect Street, Pontiac, Michigan, 48341. And then we do have online giving here at New Jerusalem Baptist Church. If you have so decide that you want to use the cash app you may use that option as well our mnemonic is dollar sign nj mbc 168 very easy fast way of giving uh, and then if you're watching us online as most of you do i believe you can go to njmbc168.org and then you can use the online giving option there as well as you will also find the givelify option on our website as well truly we thank god for you and your gifts and how you are blessing the lord and blessing new jerusalem uh you blessed the church anniversary you blessed me god bless you it is not lost on me and I hopefully prayerfully is not lost on god that he will bless you for your sacrifice even during a pandemic amen let's ask god to bless 
our offering on today. Father God, you're good. Lord, you have proved yourself awesome. And we thank you for how you dispensed that on us. You've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. And we know that's right. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, church, it's giving time. Let's give unto the Lord on today. When Jesus' was, life was hanging in the balance on the cross of Calvary, in between the two thieves, uh, one of the last things he uttered was, forgive them for they know not what they do in what a blessing it is to be included even today in the them because it shows that he has a personal attachment to each and every one of us. Those who believe in him who don't believe in him. But it's just what a blessing it is to know that he knows the hairs on our head. He knows us by name. He calls us friend. He says that he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. And oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me that I am his own. You know my You 
Amen. Truly, we thank God for you and tuning in on today. We hope and trust that you're being safe, that you're being clean during this pandemic, that you're wearing your mask every time you go outdoors, anytime you're around people, that you are protecting others from you and that you're also being protected from others. We hope that you're being safe and that you're following the protocols that have been laid out by the doctors and professionals what you're washing your hands, amen, that you are just being safe, that you're keeping all things foreign to your body, away from your body. And so we ask that you would just be safe. We love you and we want you to be well, that when we open these doors back up again, that you will be one in the number. Uh, I, I, I've learned through this for the last couple of months to stop making plans. Uh, I've learned that God is in charge and God is in control and that we are truly under the will of God in every facet of our life. My plan was to be back in the building today. That was my plan, that we would have our first worship service in person since March, uh, I believe March 8th, I think it was, that this would be the first Sunday we we're together. But the week of, we have seen spikes, 3,000 people in Michigan contracting the disease in one day. Uh, and as much as in my spirit, I want to force it, we definitely can't do it and be safe. Uh, and so we're just going to take our time. We're just going to do what God says do. Uh, pray that I hear, because I'm praying to hear. Pray that I hear. God's voice and says, this is the week or in a couple weeks, it's going to be safe to go in. Uh, hopefully we can do this soon. I don't have a time stamp on it anymore. I'm just going to wait on the numbers. I'm going to wait on God more importantly. And so hopefully you stay patient. I know you want to get in here uh, as bad as I do, maybe not as bad as I do, but I know we need to be safe and uh, we need to stay distant. And if we're doing this, using this medium and it's working, then why rush? And so truly, we thank God for you that tune in every week for a worship service on Sunday morning. And then you tune in on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. for our praise and study hour, our Bible class. I want to encourage you to meet me there on Wednesday nights. Truly, we thank God for you that have faithfully watched, faithfully tuned in and faithfully learned. What thus saith the Lord from this little city boy. And truly, I thank God for you and just being with us and being patient. Just being patient. We are working behind the scenes in New Jerusalem. Church business has not stopped. We are doing what we can do as a ministry. We just need you to pray for us. We need you to bless the church with your tithe and your offering. And we need you to just be patient. Amen. Hopefully on this week, we know it's it's uh, voter voting day on Tuesday. Hopefully you've already voted. Hopefully you've gotten that out, that out the way. Uh, I voted already. I put mine and my wife's right in the drop box uh, right outside City Hall. We dropped it in there. Hopefully you've done that as well, too. And hopefully as I'm talking about voting, this is redundant for you. You can almost tune me out because you've already done your civic duty. You've already made your voice heard, but I pray that if you have not voted, that you would do so starting now. Hopefully you got an absentee ballot already in the mail. You put it aside somewhere, go find that ballot, fill it out, stick it in the right envelopes. It's a couple of envelopes you gotta put that thing in. Seal it, take it on down to the drop box and drop it in there today. As Soon as we get off the air, I challenge you to do it today if you have not voted. We've been crying about Black Lives Matter. We've been crying about social injustices. We've been crying about racial injustices, police brutality. We've been crying about the president. You cannot do that if you do not vote. Shame on you if you cry Black Lives Matter and you don't vote. Shame on you if you cry about racial injustices and you lay that ballot aside to never be picked up again. 
Shame on you. If you complain about the president, complain about your officials politically, and you do not vote, you have to stay quiet at that point. You have no voice. You didn't make your voice heard. All that is is sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Useless noise. So I implore you, I challenge you to vote in the next couple days. I challenge you to do it today. Fill that ballot out and let's go vote and make our voice heard. There needs to be a change. I cannot tell you who to vote on for on here, but I can tell you there needs to be a change and you affect the change. Let your voice be heard. Let's get out there and vote, 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 vote. If you're watching right now, let's practice using that comment section. Type in there, vote in capital letters, exclamation point. Type that in there so that word gets out. Vote, exclamation point. Let that word eliminate across the waves of technology on today. This is time. It's now time. Amen. God bless you on today. If you have your Bible, I believe there's a word from the Lord coming from the Acts of the Apostles. And if you find Acts of the Apostles, you can go down to chapter 16. And there in Acts 16th chapter, if you will scroll down to verse 16 through 26. You will see there on our screen. I know it's an extensive reading on today. Uh, they taught us in seminary. You're only supposed to read at the most three to four verses. But I'm not in the seminary this morning. I want to read most of this story. A familiar passage of scripture. If you were an A student in Vacation Bible School, you know all about this story. If you were a B student in church school on Sunday mornings that mom and dad made you go to, you could help me preach this sermon. And so I'm going to ask you to do that today. Help me preach. If I was with you in person, I'd tell you, help me preach. What that means is you say amen if I say anything right. All right. Our subject today is but at midnight. But at midnight. Acts, the 16th chapter, verse 16 through 26. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew or show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour and when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs, which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes, Lord Jesus, and commanded to beat them. 
And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them, watch this, into the inner prison. Somebody say dungeon. And made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Somebody say suddenly. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, somebody say immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. But at midnight, there is no substitute for winning someone to Christ. If you have never won someone to Christ, you have missed out on the best of church life. This passage of scripture is a beautiful portrait of the universal love of God. It is a beautiful portrait of God's salvation to all people. Lydia represents the wealthy class. The damsel covers the poor class. The jailer represents most of America, the working middle class. And much like today, there were social economic classes in that society. It does not matter where your income slots you. You need Christ as the head of your life. Your life ought to exhibit that of a soul winner in words and in actions. And there are some things you will experience as a soul winner for Christ. There are three experiences I want to talk about here on today that's exhibited in this text that you could expect if you choose to be a faithful witness for the Lord. They are rejection, reception, and reward. The first is you will be rejected. I know it's a harsh reality to tell you, but you will be rejected because of satanic blindness. The damsel was possessed by a spirit of divination. Paul and Silas were on their way to a prayer meeting. I know we don't have that in church anymore, but that's where they were going. And there, that's when she met them. Followed them many days. And whenever you are going for God, Satan will follow you. He is trying to tempt you and cause blindness. What she said, I personally found nothing wrong with. All she recounted, if you can read the text, it's right there. All she recanted was these men are servants of the most high God which show unto us the way of salvation. The one thing you need to know is that the devil also knows who Jesus is. He is fully aware of his word and he is aware of his power. All you have to do is reread Mark chapter one, verse 24, saying, let us alone, this is the devil talking, what have we 
to do with thee, he knows his name, Jesus of Nazareth. Are you come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. With the woman in our text this morning, her spirit was not right. It did not line up with Paul's. So it grieved Paul and it grieved the Holy Spirit. It upset the spirit. It troubled the Holy Spirit that Paul possessed within. It disturbed Paul to hear the truth profaned. Oh, oh, brothers and sisters, you can say all the right things, but if your spirit is messed up when you say it, if your spirit is jacked up when you utter it, it does not mean a thing. I do not care how long you've been saying it, how long you've been repeating it. I don't care how long you've been doing it. If I have the right spirit and what you are saying bothers me, then it's not in the right spirit. Your spirit does not match up with your words. This woman said it over and over for many days. The right words with the wrong spirit. Have you ever encountered that before? Somebody who would say the right words to you with the wrong spirit. I am not trusting that. I won't hear that. And I'm not in agreement with what you say. Because though what you say is right, I just don't trust the source. I have to trust the source. So Paul silenced her. Her silence said more than her speaking. Truly, these men were of God. Then there is secular bondage which will cause rejection. The damsel was possessed by the spirit of divination, but was also possessed by her masters, Lord Jesus. She was good at soothsaying, which made her masters a lot of money. What is soothsaying, pastor? We don't hear too much of that in 2020. Soothsaying is predicting the future or fortune telling without divine authority. She made money not only for herself, but for her clientele as well. Now, I need to tell you money is good. We all need money. We all would like to have it. It's only dangerous when it's out of priority. I've learned in my maturity spiritually not to pray for money, cars, or houses. When I matured in the spirit, I stopped praying for all of that. I now pray for wisdom. I pray to hear from God. And all that stuff will come with God's wisdom. Material possession should never be ahead of God, family, or even the truth. So many rich and famous people have access to money, but they cannot sleep at night. What has this woman in secular bondage was? the love of money for the love of money is the root come on bible readers of all evil you can have all the money and comfort it brings but if you don't have jesus you are poor in spirit matthew chapter 16 verse 26 says for what is a man profited 
if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. I need a Bible, right, Bible reader right through here. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The determining factor is whether your profit is temporal or eternal. If your profit is temporal, then moth and rust corrupts. Time is stacked on it. But if your profit is eternal, then outside factors would not and cannot depreciate its value. Build your hopes. Talk to me, old church members, on things eternal, none on earth unmoved can stand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. I'd rather be poor and on my way to heaven. Good God Almighty. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. You got a minute to walk? Set your affection on things above, not on things on earth. 1 John 2, 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then there is one other thing about this woman is her selfish behavior, which will bring rejection. The damsel experienced salvation. The damsel, she experienced a miracle in verse 18. I hope you got your Bible open. But let me warn you, everybody will not be happy when you get your blessing. The damsel's deliverance meant no money for her masters. The masters did not see anything wrong with how things were. They wanted to leave it as status quo. Talk to me to a Republican. What's wrong with making this damsel tell us how we can profit? You see, the profit, the money was not wrong. But the way that they got it, oh, I wish I had time to preach this. Ah, uh, but, but let me drop this off and I'll keep it moving on this first Sunday of November. Proverbs chapter 14, the 12th verse says, there is a way. My granddad used to quote this every Sunday morning, which seemed the right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. These masters lay up treasures for themselves. And those guilty of selfish behavior tend to rest on their laurels. They tend to put their trust in treasures. Won't help you. Won't aid anybody else. They all are stingy. And they'll have the attitude that it's later for church, later for God, and later for that man, Jesus Christ. They will tell you, I know I got to get saved, but I got more time. I'm more worried about making my money. I'm more worried about how to get here. I'm more worried about myself. But Luke 12, Jesus gives a parable about a certain rich man whose ground brought plenty. And in his ponderance, he wondered what he should do because he ran out of room for all his fruit. So he said, I'll tear down the barns I have and build bigger barns and greater barns. Then he says, I'll say to my soul, soul, you've got much to say, much saved for many years to come. Take it easy. 
eat, drink, and be merry. But if you keep reading, God showed up in the text. In the parable, he showed up and said to the rich man, fool, tonight your soul is required of thee. I'm taking you out of here. The stuff you have, who is it going to belong to now? You did all that work, but you got to leave it now. The selfish lay up treasures for themselves. Therefore, they are not rich toward God. They did only enough to live all right down here, but did nothing to secure life in the eternal. So now they are on their way to hell. The selfish, they also think they're bigger than the rest of us. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 3, for if a man think himself to be something, you can help me quote it, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. The multitude of things you have, don't make you better than me. Just because your house is bigger, your car is newer, your family is larger, your income is greater, does not mean your value have increased. You are not fooling us. Talk to me, somebody. You got yourself fooled. Society has you fooled into believing the more you have, the more important you are. So as a result of this rejection by the masters in the text, Paul and Silas were persecuted. Verse 20 says, they were guilty of troubling the city. If you are a soul winner, you will and you ought to be guilty of troubling the city to the point that they want to and they got to get rid of you. It's depicted in the text when the writer says they were stripped of their clothing. Then they laid many stripes upon them and put them in prison. And then the jailer thrust them into, King James says, the inner prison, thrust them into the dungeon and bound their feet. They went from prison to an inner prison because they were dangerous. And since you, my brothers and sisters, are so dangerous, they're doing what they can to get rid of you. The inner prison is the dungeon. A dungeon is the place of most uncomforted. It's where it's dark and dingy. It's where it's dank and damp. It's solitary confinement. That when you find yourself in this kind of trouble, you will look up and notice that there is no one else around you. Friends have walked out. Family has turned their back on you. And there's nobody you can go to or even talk to. It turns itself into a mental prison where it becomes the prison of your mind. Some folk have even put their own self, have put themselves in this prison of their own mind. And all it is designed to do is break you. It's designed to disharden you and to discourage you. No matter what happens to you, I need somebody to shout right here, God will always be with you. He will never leave you 
David put it this way, nor forsake you. He will be with you in your time of suffering. You can never fall too low that God cannot find you. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. The text says, at midnight, they've been whipped with many stripes, and now they're sore in pain, cut open and bloody, which could bring and has caused many to complain. That's not all. They feared execution. Their feet were in stocks, which causes pain. But Paul and Silas did not complain. In that midnight, which signifies trouble, midnight signifies transition, midnight signifies death, signifies trouble because it's the darkest hour of the night. And in the darkest time, some midnights last longer than just 60 seconds. I wish I had a witness of somebody who had to endure a midnight. Midnight signifies transition because it's one day leading to the next day. It's a transition between good and bad. It's a transition between blessing and cursing. It's a transition between love and hate. Midnight signifies death. Because if you remember back in your Sunday school days when you were growing up, the death angel swept through Egypt, swept through town at midnight. But what part of silence while in the midnight? Have you ever had a midnight? Oh, don't play with me. Have you had a midnight experience? Can I tell you what it looked like? It's when it's too dark to see. It's when trouble is all around you. It's when it seems like death has swept into your room. When it looked like you were in this midnight all by yourself. I need you, pastor, to tell me now how to handle the midnight. Now you told me what it looked like. Well, the first thing you do is you pray to God for support. Pray to God for comfort in the midst of your affliction. You got to use your pain from your stripes as your testimony. I dare you to pray for your persecutors so that God will forgive them. Oh, I know that sounds familiar. Jesus said it on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. It doesn't even look like the hour of prayer. It doesn't even feel like the house of prayer. But at midnight, you had your midnight, and you got to do it by singing praises unto God. Praise puts your heart in tune with God. If you don't know a song, make one up. How do you handle your midnight? You got to do it publicly. Watch this. I'm in the text. The other prisoners heard them pray. And they heard them sing praises unto God. You got to sing in your dungeon. Because if you sing in your dungeon, it may free all the other prisoners in there with you. Somebody else's freedom depends on your praise. How do I handle midnight? You got to stay consistent. Stay faithful, stay committed, and stay obedient. And you will find out that God works the midnight shift. 
wait on the Lord and be of good comfort for God will strengthen your heart. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. The text says, and suddenly. There they reaped what they sold. Their needs were met. Lives were changed at midnight. And suddenly a great earthquake shook the prison. And immediately the doors were opened and their bands loose. You are loose by your prayer. You are loose by your praise. You are loose by your worship. You're loose because you know God. You are loose. No more chains holding me. He saves while you are in prison, which gives you the title of God having becoming your deliverer. I got news for you. I'm coming out of this. I'm getting out of here. I'm coming out blessed. I'm getting out of this blessed. I'm breaking out of these chains blessed. The bonds are loosed because I've been blessed. And I love that last text, the last verse of the text. It kept saying suddenly, and it kept talking about immediately. I know you've been waiting for God to bless you. You've been praying and praying, waiting and waiting. Days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, and months turn into a whole year, and you're still waiting. But I serve a God. Who can do it immediately. I serve a God. Uh, who can do it suddenly. Uh, that when you turn around. Uh, God is right there. Uh, when you turn around. Uh, it's already done. Uh, when you turn around. Uh, you've been healed. Uh, when you turn around. Uh, you've been delivered. Uh, when you turn around. Uh, you've been set free. Uh, thank God for Jesus. Uh, on this last first Sunday. Uh, of November. Uh, thank God for Jesus. Uh, who set you free on the third day he rose out the grave and suddenly we're healed suddenly we got power suddenly we got a right to the tree of life I'm here to tell you your wait is over your wait is over your wait is over suddenly God's going to show up and show out at midnight your wait is over. And God's going to do what he promised he's going to do. You won't have to cry no more. You won't have to worry anymore. God's going to do it for you. God bless you. I am now going to ask the Bishop of the House would now get the elements for communion together if you will get the bread and get your wine your fruit of the vine as we begin celebrating the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I want to give you time to secure the elements right now Let us ask God to bless these of you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the blessed privilege and honor to come together as a family around this table. We know that there will be a great banquet in heaven when you come for your church. Until then, we do as your word says. That as oft as we do this, we do show the Lord's death till he returns. We want to thank you, Father God, for the greatest offering ever given. The ultimate sacrifice that you gave your only begotten son for our salvation. 
Jesus, we thank you for enduring the cross, looking through time and seeing that we all needed the blood of a lamb that's without spot and blemish. We thank you for enduring the pains of the cross, the unfair trial, the degradation, the insults, being spat upon, being stripped of all your raiment, whipped on all night long. You did all that for us. In addition, you were nailed in your hands, spiked in your feet, pierced in your side for us. Oh Lord, we thank you for the joy that set before you being us. It wasn't the nails that held you to the cross. But you saw Robertson. You saw all these that are logged on and watching. You stayed there knowing that if you come down from the cross, this whole world would be lost. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you for the bloodshed. Thank you for staying there when the sun refused to shine and the moon ran down in blood and the stars fell and even while the earth shook like a drunken man that a Roman soldier had to testify that truly you must be the son of God. Our faith looks up to thee. Our soul reveres thee. We honor and worship you, Lord. Now bless these elements the bread and the wine, transform it from the physical to the spiritual, that it will be nourishment for our soul. Bless the hands that prepare, bless the soul that's gonna receive. Forgive each and every one of us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Make us worthy, make us fit to partake of your blood and your body. Help us to forgive our enemy and anyone we have an all against. That we do not take this unto weakness, sickness, or even death. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And we thank you. We worship you and we say hallelujah to your name. And everybody say, amen. Amen. Now, hopefully that the head of the house has gotten the bread and the wine and you have already broken it and you have distributed to your family members and friends that you are there watching with we're asking that you will now take the bread in your hand we ask that you lift it up Jesus was in a room with his disciples and said this is my body which is broken for you take eat ye all of it He didn't take the cup. There was no need to bless it. It was his body. It was his blood, rather, that was shed on Calvary in coming out. He said, this blood was shed for you for the remission of sin. Songwriter said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood over you, your household, your finances, your job your children, your parents. I bless you in the name of Jesus that you take this blood and drink it for the remission of your sin and for the replenishing of your faith and for the regeneration of your strength. Take, drink ye all of it. Amen. Father God, we this thank my you. my prayer that the worship that we've experienced together and the word you just received has once again encouraged and created a faith in you that is greater than any fear. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this broadcast and you are moved to walk in faith, surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ for the very first time, or maybe reconnect yourself in your walk with the Lord, do me a favor, send us an email to njmbc168 at gmail.com and I and one of our preachers will reach out back to you and joyfully share with you God's perfect plan of salvation for your life. If you're moved to be a part of something bigger than yourself, 
during this time of isolation, I pray that you realize how important community is. And if you desire to be a part of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church community, on our website, you'll find all the information that you need about our church. We want you to contact us so we can contact and connect with you. That way we can build a relationship that we may count you as one of our own. If you are a member of New Jerusalem Baptist Church and are in need of anything at all, especially resources or prayer, once again, reach out to the church during this time of isolation. We want every member to know that we are deeply, intimately, and prayerfully concerned about you and your family. Reach out to us that we may continue to reach out to you. As we get ready to say goodbye today, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you were blessed by the word of God, do me a favor, sign on and subscribe to our Facebook and to our YouTube channel that you may be kept informed of all our worship, all our announcements, and all our activities. If you've been blessed, remember that we are still seeking to be a blessing. We're still ministering to our community. We are still caring for our youth and our seniors. And I'm asking you to be faithful in your gifts of God. At New Jerusalem, we don't believe in begging for anything. We believe that if you would pray and ask God what you should do financially, if you obey, what God places upon your heart, the church can't help but to be blessed. Hey, this is Pastor Robertson. We're looking forward to being with you in worship again on next time. Log in anytime you can. Together we might continue to worship of a God who is worthy. The Lord bless and keep thee. The more make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the road rise and meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sunshine warm your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may he hold you in the palm of his hand. God bless you. Have a great week. Every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for our weekly praise and study hour, Pastor Robertson brings an in season and on time word that will stir you to praise and encourage you to study your word. We invite you to log on weekly every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for praise and study hour with Dr. Lorenzo Robertson. Hi, everyone. We are in a time of great uncertainty. And as Michigan's Chief Election Officer, I want to give you the certainty and the clarity that our elections will be safe, secure, accessible, and on schedule. We have two statewide elections this year, a primary election on August 4th and the general election this November 3rd. You will be able to vote safely in those elections, and you'll have several options on how to do so. First, you can have your ballot mailed to your home, which you can then return by mail at a local drop box or in person at your local clerk's office. To choose this option, visit michigan.gov slash vote or use the application you received in the mail by mailing it or emailing it back to your local clerk. You will also have the option to vote in person either prior to election day at your local clerk's office or at a polling place on election day itself. My administration is working with clerks to ensure they have the personal protection equipment and hygiene supplies they need to make sure your in-person experience is safe and you will always have the option to vote in person on election day at your local precinct. You can confirm the location of your precinct at michigan.gov slash vote. In the months ahead, if you see information that is confusing or seems wrong, please contact us so that we can address it and ensure you have accurate information about your rights and your vote. You can always visit michigan.gov slash vote or your local clerk's website for trusted information. Democracy is a team sport and we all need to work together to ensure every vote is counted and every voice is heard.